deposit of $25. So now we have to think about what does zero represent in this situation? Our label for 25 is dollars, so we're talking about money. So it would be easy for us to say that zero represents zero dollars. But zero doesn't mean that I have no money in my account. Because this isn't, um, it doesn't tell us how much money I started with. So this does not represent my account balance. It could represent your starting balance. This is the starting point, and if you took out $25, then it would go down from there. Or if you put in $25, it would go up from there. It would be your starting balance, or it could represent no transaction, no change in your account balance. So be careful with that when we're talking about money, unless it gives you the starting balance or it tells you're starting with zero. Zero doesn't mean you have no money in the account. It's just the point where you're starting before these transactions or it represents no change in your balance, no transaction. Okay, we'll move down to example number two. Maria decides to take a walk along Central Avenue to purchase a book at the bookstore. On her way, she passes the Furry Friends Pet Shop and goes in to look for a new leash for her dog. Furry Friends Pet Shop is seven blocks west of the bookstore. She leaves Furry Friends Pet Shop and walks towards the bookstore to look at some books. After she leaves the bookstore, she heads east for seven blocks and stops at Ray's Pet Shop to see if she can find a new leash at a better price. I like bargain shoppers. Which location, if any, is the farthest from Maria while she's at the bookstore? We have to determine an appropriate scale and model the situation on the number line they've provided. So I want you to reread this to yourself, paying special attention to the locations that Maria stops, and also what are they asking us to find. Okay, in this case, Maria goes three places. Uh, the first place that it talks about are Furry Friends Pet Store, which I'm gonna call FF. She goes to the bookstore, and she goes to Ray's Pet Shop. Those are the three places that she goes. Um, it talks about direction, that she's traveling east and west. So when we're looking at the number line, if we said up at the top would be north, the bottom would be south. So left and right would represent our east and west, which makes sense on a, on a horizontal number line. So some of you might know, never eat sour wheat. If you do that, that's fine. That will get you in the right direction. But you could make a mistake and say never eat sour wheat, and that would be wrong. So a way that I like to make sure my east and west are in the right spot it spells we. So west is to the left, east is to the right. Those are the directions we're going to move on the number line. Okay, so we have to figure out what is our starting point. So when they tell us where Furry Friends Pet Shop is located, it's seven blocks west of the bookstore. Um, when it talks about where Ray's Pet Shop is located, it's seven blocks east of the bookstore. So both of these locations are in reference to the bookstore. They have both of these places in common. So we are going to call the bookstore zero. Zero is at the bookstore because now we can move west and east from the bookstore based on the information that they've given us. Okay. She is going on her way. She passes the furry, furry Friends Pet Shop and goes in to look for a new leash for her dog. Furry Friends Pet Shop is seven blocks west of the bookstore. 
So if we start at the bookstore and we're moving seven blocks west, the scale that I've chosen here is one. So each unit is equal to one block. So if I start at the bookstore and I go seven blocks to the west, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That puts me right here for the furry, furry friends pet shop. Okay? She leaves furry friends pet shop and walks towards the bookstore to look at some books. When she leaves the bookstore, she heads east for seven blocks and stops at Ray's pet shop. So if I'm at the bookstore, I'm going to move seven blocks to the east. One block is one unit, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and she stops here at Ray's. So, based on this information and what you have on your number line, please write a sentence that answers the question, which location, if any, is farthest from Maria while she's at the bookstore? Do that now, push pause when you're finished. Okay, hopefully you will able to determine that Furry Friends is located at negative seven on our number line. Ray's Pet Shop is located at seven on the number line. Negative seven and seven are opposites. And as per the first sentence on this classwork, numbers are opposites if they are on the opposite side of zero and the same distance from zero on the number line. Because they are opposites, they are the same distance from zero. In this case, they are the same distance from the bookstore. So, which location, if any, is furthest from Maria at the bookstore? They are the same distance from the bookstore. It says, what does zero represent in this situation? Well, as you can see here, we marked zero as our bookstore. It is our starting point because it is the reference point for both locations. Both locations are told where they are from the bookstore. So that makes sense for us to start there to get to both locations. Okay, turn your paper over. Read each situation carefully and answer the questions. Number four. On a number line, label and it, locate and label a credit of $15 and a debit for the same amount from a bank account. What does zero represent in this situation? So we have number four. We have to think back to lesson two, a credit. When they credit your account, they're giving you money to spend, so that would be a positive transaction. When you swipe your debit card or they debit your account, you're going to take money out. That would be a negative transaction. Okay? So my integers for a credit of 15 would be a positive 15. A debit 15 would be a negative 15. So looking on here, based on the number of spaces, a scale of an appropriate scale would be counting by fives. So if we start at zero, 5, 10, 15, negative 5, negative 10, negative 15. On a number line, locate and label a credit of 15. So the credit is positive, and I'm just going to mark that C. That is my credit. And a debit for the same amount, debit is a negative transaction, so that would be negative 15. So I might mark that as D for debit. I have followed those directions. That is all for number four. Moving on, we can look at number five. So on a number line, locate and label 20 degrees below zero and 20 degrees Celsius above zero. What does zero represent in this situation? They have provided a horizontal number line. Even though it says above and below zero, we should know at this point which is a positive integer, and what is a negative. Okay? 
based on the number of spaces here, uh, 20 degrees Celsius below zero would be negative. 20 degrees Celsius above zero would be positive. So the appropriate scale would be counting by tens. So this would be 10, 20, 90, 10, 20. Okay, so 20 degrees below zero, and I might call that B. 20 degrees above zero would be A. Now, what does zero represent in this situation? Okay, well again, what are we talking about here? What do these numbers represent? They represent degrees Celsius. This is 20 degrees below zero. So zero represents zero degrees Celsius. Now, that's one thing we did forget to talk about over here on number four. We said, if this was a credit of 15, we're putting $15 into the account. A debit of 15 would be taking 15 out of the account. So this would represent our starting balance. Or it represents no change, no transaction. Okay, I want you to complete number six on your own. This is an easy one. A proton represents a positive charge. Write an integer to represent five protons. An electron represents a negative charge. Write an integer to represent three electrons. Push pause until you have that finished. Okay, so to represent five protons, protons are positive, your integer would be five. To represent negative charge, three negative charge, your integer would be negative three. Now there is a couple of things I want us to go over. That completes the class for, for lesson four. Moving towards the problem set, there are a couple of things that I want to review. First of all, the word location. It's a vocabulary word from lesson one. The location tells the number of units to the right or left of zero. So when it asks you to tell the location, um, if the number is, if the integer is negative 12, the location of negative 12 is 12 units left of zero. So when you're looking at the problem set, number one says find the opposite of each number and describe its location on the number line. So you'll find the opposite of negative five and tell the location of the opposite of negative five on the number line using words in this format. Okay, moving down to number two, you're going to write the opposite of each number and then label the points on the number line. So when you're labeling them, make sure you've got your point A and the opposite of point A labeled as such. They provided the number line for you. Follow all the directions. Number three, you are going to write an integer that represents the opposite of the real world situation and then write the meaning of the opposite. So if this example, if they said uh, there were three electrons, I know that represents negative three integer. The opposite of that would be positive three. That's no longer representing electrons. So in words, write the meaning of the opposite. So it would be a positive three and it would represent three protons. So there's a real world explanation of the opposite. Uh, number four and number five are very much like what we did here. You're plotting points and their opposite, describing the meaning of zero. Make sure that that is very clear. You've answered that in a complete sentence, and that's all. Good luck.